when we want to graph an absolute value transformation, so in other words, when we have a function inside of absolute value bars, all we're going to do is graph the function as if the absolute value bars were not there. So ignore the absolute value bars and graph the function like normal. Then all we're going to do is take any y values that are negative and reflect them up over the x-axis since um, we can't have negative y values um, when it comes to um, getting a final answer for absolute value. So if I look at these three examples, um, the first one is to graph y equals the absolute value of x cubed. So I'm going to ignore the absolute value bars and I'm going to graph y equals x cubed. Well I know that y equals x cubed, 1 cubed is 1, negative 1 cubed is negative 1, uh, my graph here isn't big enough. I know 2 cubed would be 8 and negative 2 cubed would be negative 8. Um, but I also know that the shape of my apps of, excuse me, my x cubed function is looking something like this. So there's my function of x cubed. However, I wasn't asked to graph x cubed. Um, I was asked to graph the absolute value of x cubed. Well, all I'm going to do, and I would suggest, and I'm sorry to mention this in the beginning of the video, I would suggest you have two separate colors to do these notes um, because what I'm usually going to have you do or what I think works easiest is to graph the original function and then just kind of re-graph the absolute value transformation to the function just over your original function and then just make a note of which is the the new uh, complete function. Um, so I grab a different color and all I'm going to do now, so I'm going to take any y values that are negative, so I notice anything here is negative, and I'm just going to reflect them up over the x-axis. So that negative 1, negative 1 is going to reflect up to 1, 1, and I'm going to be coming up towards positive infinity when I reflect over, and then all of these are going to remain. So my final answer is the blue graph, so the blue graph is y equals absolute value of x cubed. I do not need that red piece. I would erase it, but once I change colors, I don't know why, but I can't erase what I did in, in another color. Um, so I can't take the red off. So I'll just do two colors. Um, and, then I, and also I think for your notes, I think it's nice to have yours in two colors so you can see what you did. Um, so you're not just going, where did this graph come from? I don't have any steps. Um, so then on the second one, I'm supposed to graph y equals x squared minus 3. So I'm going to do it the same way. I'll start in red and just graph y equals x squared minus 3 without the absolute value bars. I know this is a parabola that's been shifted down 3. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in some points that I know just to make my graph a little bit nicer. So here would be my function without the absolute value bars and what I'm going to do now to figure out what the actual given function was with the absolute value bars is I'm going to take all of this down here that's underneath or all of these values down here that are negative y values and I'm going to reflect them up over the x-axis so when this um, vertex reflects up it's going to be here when this point here reflects up it'll be here this point will be here and so my new graph, these are going to stay because these were positive. And then instead of continuing down, I'm going to jump up to these points that were reflected up. And then the same thing here. So again, I would erase that red. However, I can't because of my limitations on the program I use to make my videos. So the blue graph... is my y equals absolute value of x squared minus 3. Looking at one more example, if you would like to try one, this would be a great one to try. So I'm going to start by graphing y equals 1 over x minus 2. So again, this is a function I'm familiar with. Notice it's a reciprocal function, and I just have to make sure and go um, to the right two units. So I'm going to go over 2. And then instead of having an asymptote with the y-axis, it'll now have an asymptote with the line x equals 2. And doing the same thing down here. Okay, 
And now I'm going to go ahead and take anything that has negative y values, so this piece here, I'm going to reflect up over the x-axis, and when I do, I'm still going to have that asymptote, but instead of approaching negative infinity, I'm approaching positive infinity. And this is going to stay, so I'm going to trace over this. Since I can't erase the red and the note of the blue graph is my f of x equals absolute value of 1 over x minus 2. And that's it. That's how you graph absolute value transformations.